All right, so I finally watched this thing and I was reluctant to watch it because I was afraid it was going to be like a hug fest between political allies, you know, that was going to like, you know, take a opposing stance, but then everyone's going to make up in the end and it was going to be all good. Um, so everyone got mad, so that's not what it was. So I watched it and let's let's take a look at some like highlights because I am going to go through the whole thing. But here, here are some highlights. And I think that that is an incoherent message in comparison to the incredible work and I know families who've worked with you and, and they absolutely think that you have saved their families' lives and their children, you've saved them from catastrophic transition. And my God, I, I, I wish that that element of the things that you do so well sort of extended right across. But I think there is an incoherence between trying to understand an AGP, which I think you should do from a therapeutic level if your patient has got AGP, I think it's absolutely right that you have an understanding of that. But on that television program, I think Hayton was given a uh, far too easy a ride. So here's my problem with this whole, oh, but Genspect has really helped my family and they've helped lots of families. You know, as we'll go on to hear, uh, Stella says that, that that's not their purpose. That's not what they're there to do, except for, I guess, direct families to resources or whatever that they're uh, a political lobby group uh you know uh, w w no one knows what they are anyway but what you don't understand you, you know who else was helpful gangs you know gangs in the street of la bloods and crips and the latin kings throwing up set uh, they, they were helpful because they filled in areas where there were gaps in policing, where there was gaps in community services. They provided that. They provided protection for, uh, you know, the local economy and, and business owners and things like that. Doesn't mean that they w didn't also become a menace, right? Things have to start off as helpful and useful to properly infiltrate. It's the only way that people will let their guard down and allow them in. That's how it works. That, that That's literally a wolf in sheep's clothing that's the definition of it of course they're going to be helpful to some extent that does not mean that we should not look at the gl other glaring signs that there is something much more nefarious going on and that there's other people behind the scenes who are pulling strings stella o'malley is just a figurehead okay she's just somebody to put out in front so that you know when everyone goes to criticize genspect it's like oh this woman who's just doing her best not realizing that it's these academics these these people in positions of power uh people who have direct ties and relationships with the gender industry that are really behind the scenes pulling the strings uh bailey blanchard uh you know these they're we, we probably don't even know the full extent right so i'm sorry but oh they you know helped a few families it is not there's a lot of great, uh, there's a lot of great organizations that are out there helping families. Um, you know, you know who else was helpful? Do you guys remember uh, Sandusky from Penn State, who was had a whole boys and girl, a boys club, and was helping underprivileged boys? Do, do you not realize that that's how he got away with raping little boys for as long as he did? Because oh, he's a great, he's a great guy in the community. He's out there reaching out to. You know, families, vulnerable families. He's he's really helping them. Of course, you know you know who also did a lot of great things for the community. John Wayne Gacy, right? So I'm I'm not saying that these people. I, clearly, I'm not saying or implying at all that Stella or Jen Spect or anybody affiliated with them are literal psychopaths or murdering or or raping or you know. But but it's not to say that people are not. You know, they're not mutually exclusive things. Doing some good things that are helpful and useful to some people is not mutually exclusive with also having a much darker, more nefarious, self-serving motivation for uh, the, the organization that you've created. The situation. I saw you put, uh, Kelly, I saw you put a, a mic on a proud boy and he spoke at a, you know, a Let Women Speak in, in uh, Miami. I saw, you know, neo-Nazis give salutes in Melbourne. I saw you on a podcast with a guy and he was some sort of white nationalist, anti, anti Semite, and speaking with those guys, what are they called? Christs of soldiers of Christ. Never has Genspect ever criticized you. Never have I ever criticized you. And I know there's people who are well able to search my Twitter and search Genspect. We haven't done any cleanup. 
And the lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> you guys like went and deleted uh, tons of stuff off of the Gen Spec main. Maybe not about Kelly J. Keen, but oh, clean up. It's definitely your move. We have never criticized you, and I have never criticized you. Unless I might have way back in 2018, 2019, when I was much looser. I might have gone, blah, blah, blah. but it was never a criticism of your work, because I think your work is brilliant. So every single time I saw Proud Boys and Neo Nazis, I bit my lip and I thought, being in the public eye, it's tricky. It's really tricky, and you've got to be really sensitive around it. Like, why did this not feel like kind of like Stella <clears throat> putting her foot on Kelly's neck a little bit? Because remember, even though Kelly J. Keen is obviously the far more intelligent one of the two, I, I don't, you know, I don't even know because Stella's got to be pretty smart if she's able to manipulate this many people. But we know that Stella commands more money and more power, right? I mean, at least for now. You know, she has academia in her pocket. She works with... You know, I think that Kelly J. Keene has the potential to become an absolute force to be reckoned with, and she's already well on her way. But why does this feel like Stella putting her neck on Kelly, her foot on Kelly's neck a little bit, and being like, "We've never criticized you. Play nice." I, I this should concern us. I'm sorry. It should concern us. It should concern us. Okay, maybe we need to be strong enough to be like, "Hey, what's going on here? You guys can keep getting mad, but..." It was a, a meeting to hold WPAT to account. It was a meeting to highlight the problems with gender ideology. It wasn't at all. Nowhere near. Nothing to do with therapeutic. Just because I'm a therapist. So you're a lobby group. Good. Are you a lobby? I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. So are you uh, a lobby group? What are, uh, what, are, what is Genspect if it's not therapeutic? You're a lobby group. It's not therapeutic. It's not therapeutic at no, all. No, I know. It's I'm just saying you just said that. <laughs> Yeah, it's an advocacy group. It's it's an advocacy group. Yeah, so yeah, we do lobbying. Okay. We definitely do educational resources. We try to run public awareness campaigns. We do offer guidance because we happen to, uh, you know, obviously I know more therapists than I know most people. So we offer a lot of guidance for schools, guidance for clinicians. We have a small section of Genspec, which is beyond trans, which, by the way, provides funding for people who've been harmed by medical transition. We don't have, there's no such thing as a Genspec therapist. There's no such thing as a beyond trans therapist. We provide funding for anybody who wants to get therapy. They get the therapy from the list. It's nothing to do with us. We are not employing them. And we provide the funding for the therapy for people who've been harmed by medical transition. That's, that's, that's not therapeutic. That's providing funding. And that's the yes. only thing that you could yeah. arguably say. So again, out of her own mouth, Stella O'Malley says that they are a political lobby group. They're not a therapeutic group. They're, they're, I, she, what I guess, wants to raise awareness about autogynephilia. It's a real interesting way to raise awareness about the problems of autogynephilia by platforming an autogynephile and promoting his weird degenerate book that was like probably at least mostly AI generated uh so it's like okay so you've shown that you have very poor judgment you're telling us that less than you know five years ago you didn't even know what autogynephilia was despite working with ray blanchard who is the academic who originated the theory of autogynephilia but okay i guess we'll just take you at your word that you didn't know what it was um you're clearly in no position to be taking over the trans lobby or to be the highest authority on uh, uh, just transgender medicalization. We don't need another trans lobby, okay? We don't need another trans medical uh, NGO. We don't need another trans non-governmental organization. We need to dismantle all of that. That's the problem. Uh, well, I don't know why anybody's co-signing saying like, yeah, I hope you guys are successful. No, this is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I, I, to me, it could not be more clear. But if you guys need more proof, then I guess I'll just stay on this topic. You guys can keep on following me. I don't care. I must say I'm really pleased that we've had this conversation because I really like admire you and, and like you as a person. I think that you've done some extraordinary things, Stella. And I just, I think these other little things just have had the capacity to damage some of the things that you've done and I'd, I'd really like there to be no flies on you because if anyone's going to take out WPATH, uh, you've got the best chance. And so I really hope that you felt this has been a lovely conversation in which we've, we've aired some truly magnificent stuff, but we've both, I do. you know, you've both gained. 
I, I really do. I'm, I'm really relieved. I was tense all day. I'm just so pleased that we were, you let women speak, may I say. <laughs> do exactly what it says in the tin. Yeah, well, you know, I gotta say it's one interesting call-out strategy. Uh, you guys sure that this doesn't look like uh, a sort of PR patch-up between two political allies? It's, uh, yeah, finally watched it, finally finished it. I gotta say, guys, this is what it's looking like, you know? But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you guys are welcome to keep on following me. You're welcome to uncritically follow the in-group. But groupthink can affect people, even the people who we think are the strongest. And this is why infiltrators are such a severe threat to this movement. Because they look like us, they talk like us, they don't have the same motivations as us. But then when you call them out, everyone says, oh, well, oh, it's just the infighting. I can't. I can't take the infighting. I mustn't do any more infighting. Oh, no, 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 not infighting, okay? And um, yeah, and it eventually becomes politically advantageous to continue to work with people as they become more popular. And then we overlook these problematic things. And, and, and she admits, Stella O'Malley admits that this is a political lobby group seeking to take over the trans lobby. So replace WPATH means take over the trans lobby. And you're saying we should not criticize this with a very fine tooth comb, a very microscopic lens. No, yeah, no, we, I'm going to do a, uh, you guys can hate me all you want. I, I, I'm doing a live stream when my kids go back to school. <laughs>